Yes, I know those look like whiskers, but no, this is not a cat. We're trying to show you here in, in this uh, advanced Botox understanding of the lower face, the areas that I can work on for Botox for lower face. There are some um, caveats when we work down here, and there's going to be areas that I do work and areas I don't work, and I want to explain to you what I'm talking about. Let's start from down here and work our way up and then out and tell you the areas that I can work with. Okay, this muscle here is called the depressor anguli oris, or DAO. This muscle is usually injected down here, and when it's released at the base, the tail of the mouth can turn up just a little bit, and it can soften a little bit this labial mandibular fold, or this little puppet line. So an injection down here can knock out the DAO, or depressor anguli oris. Just medial or toward the nose side is an area called the depressor labii inferioris. The depressor labii inferioris right here is one that actually downturns your lip. Some cases of paralysis on the other side, for example, you can actually balance and hit this one to make the lips even. But if you're not trying to do that, you do not want to actually inject this. This is a danger zone. If you inject this area, your lip will actually fall, uh, I'm sorry, it will not pull down, it will actually stay up, and that will come down on the other side and will not look even. So this is an area that I usually use only for reconstructive cases to balance, but you should not inject the DLI or depressor labii inferioris in most cases. This is an area called the mentalis muscle. The mentalis muscle is, is cleaved in the center, and you can inject here to knock out this area. The only reason you would do this is if they have what's called a pebble chin, or peau d'orange in French, they call it also, which is just the fact that you get a little pebbling. If you see a a hyperactive um, uh, mentalis muscle. And then, um, I, I don't know if you can see, I can see the neck. There's a young lady, so she doesn't have it. But if you have hypertrophic um, uh, the patisma muscles, and sometimes there's an adjacent band here, these areas can be knocked down using uh, Botox as well. And so the caveat when you work with an act overactive platysma muscle is that you may be looking at a muscle that's actually sagging, and that's not going to improve with Botox. It's actually going to worsen with Botox. So you usually can see it when they talk. There's this dynamic component where the, the muscle is bounding or they're athletic individual or they're a younger individual. These are the patients that usually get a better treatment with, uh, with platysmal injections of Botox. It has been talked about knocking the necklace lines. In my opinion and my experience is that this truly, these lines that go horizontally, it's really, a, it just doesn't do very much. Um, and on, honestly, um, the, the things I just talked to you about down here, I rarely do a DAO. I rarely do a mentalis injection. In my opinion, this is just a really waste of money. I mean, you're just doing things for a few weeks, so six to seven weeks of, of changes that really don't have much um, value in the long run. I always talk about Botox in the long run to help l with long run changes. To me, those things really don't do much. But if it, you requested, you've had it done by a dermatologist and you like it, I certainly know how technically to do it. But I just wanted to explain to you, um, besides what I can do, what I would do for you. And that's a big difference because I'm just not here to waste your money. I'm here to give you the education um, so you know about it, but also not just do crazy stuff for you. Um, now around the mouth, there's a fine muscle that goes around the mouth called the orbicularis oris. And remember the one around the, uh, the, around the eye is called the orbicularis oculi. So the orbicularis oris that runs around the mouth like this, the little mu muscles that purse your lip, those are areas that I do like to inject, but not for the reasons you may be thinking about. Most women always see these fine lines. I would say about 80% of the women are actually discouraged from trying to treat these lines with Botox because they really don't have it. They just think they see it because they're too, too close. But also um, about, I would say, I think 20% is excess. I'd say 5% of women up there, I just watch them. They have this weird pursing motion, and they're just either drinking from a water bottle, water bottle or other type of, or straw or doing bad habits and then or smoker and they just used to moving their mouth even subconsciously so they're creasing increasing 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 so this is an area that I really do like to inject um, to help control the bad habits it doesn't last long it's about six weeks but I charge about half price of my normal Botox dose and it's not to erase all the lines but to start disconnecting the motion from the brain so what I'm trying to do here is take a patient from an excessive uh, behavior issue, break it so that over long run they will stop doing it. So my goal ultimately is to do this to train long-term behavior. So after I'm hoping two or three rounds, I don't need to continue to do it. And then maybe a year later if I start seeing that behavior somehow return, I'll come back and do it. I always give a caveat around the mouth, which is two things. One is it doesn't last that long, about six weeks or so. The second thing that I find problematic is that some of the P's and B's uh, can be slightly uh, blunted. So if they're a public speaker or, you know, 
they have to go do presentations. You always want to be careful of that. And all the bad habits of you know sucking from a straw and drinking from a water bottle are going to be um, actually hurt. You cannot do those during the time that the Botox is in effect or not so effectively. So soup, sipping on a soup and all those things can be effective. But I do mention that only because even if they say, well, I don't want to do that because there's a risk there. Well, if you're, if you're a public speaker, fine, maybe not a good idea. But if th- my goal is not this short-term six-week fix. It's, remember, to block the bad habits. So after two or three repeated rounds, if you are a candidate, and I'll help you see it because during a consultation, believe it or not, I'm actually looking at the motion of your muscles. If I don't see that, I'm not going to recommend it to you because I think it's going to be a waste of money. But if I do see it and you don't see it, I'm here to help you and give you the guidance to tell you, look, I think you need a couple rounds just to block the habits. And I'm pretty consistent with that. Uh, in other words, when I see you, I'll probably tell you again if I hadn't told you if I had told you before, I'll probably repeat it to you that maybe some of those bad habits can be um, blocked. The muscle that wraps around the nose right here is called the levator aliquinasi, or in, in Latin, the lifter of the ala uh, aliquinasi and nose. So this area, if you knock out the central area, it will actually drop this area right here, and it can also improve the nasolabial fold, this fold that nasolabial groove, and also can lengthen the lip, is when you smile, you get this gummy smile where you show too much of the red gum. That can drop down if you inject the levator aliquinasi. I would tell you in most patients, this is a silly treatment again, but I would only do it if, like, you know, I don't know, if you had a major social event, you just don't like the gummy smile, you're a model, but, you know, for me to inject this every couple months, I think is just a waste of money, but if you really bothered you, wanted it, and you it got a nice result in the past, great. Um, you can also inject the depressor septi muscle that comes down and extends up to the upper lip. A lot of patients come to me for rhinoplasty, and I don't like really cutting that muscle. I think it fundamentally changes the architecture of the low nose. But when you inject this area, um, it will actually, some people don't like how the nose tip drops during smiling, you can actually inject the depressor septi muscle. My opinion, again, here's another wasted thing to do, but I can do it for you if you like. I'm just not into wasting money and going being creative. I know all the musculature. I can do it for you, but I'm really looking for long-term gains. So again, these are the areas that I really like to hit in terms of long-term improvements. Those are the areas around the mouth in terms of bad behavior. The reason I have this uh, muscle marked out, and I think you can see, yeah, you can see it here, is called the zygomaticus muscle. There's patients, this is going to be bridging our other video with the upper upper face, if you get into this area, it's a no man's zone. You do not want to inject Botox in this area because unless you go really superficial, there's some things in Philippines about micro Botox where you're just changing the skin effect. But if you go deep with this injection, but there's even some deep diffusion of Botox, if you get it into the zygomaticus muscle right here, they're not going to smile normally. So if you ever had Botox where you just couldn't smile normally, the doctor went too far down below this oral rim and got into the zygomatis, zygomaticus muscle. So if you've got lines that come down this way, don't chase it down here. Don't follow into this muscle because you hit the zygomaticus, you're going to affect the way that they smile. And that's very, very important. I have one more marking to show you out here. This masseter muscle that extends like this down the muscle on the outer part of the mandible um, is a muscle that uh, it can be it can be large during clenching. And you guys probably know that I actually do this for facial contouring. This is a much higher dose. It costs a little bit more. It does last considerably longer, somewhere between six months to a year. And I found that with patients, if I can actually atrophy the mus- muscle with a couple sequential shots, say sequenced at six months to nine month intervals, I can actually atrophy the muscle, the bone juncture, so that the muscle itself may have some better longevity after two to three rounds. Saying it's permanent, I think is dangerous. But anyway, this is a very complex anatomy down here. I thought, you know, it would be nice to give you a little tutorial on everything I can do for you, but then emphasize the areas that I would do for you based on some uh, major areas. So the areas I do more commonly are masseter ch- contour changes, abicularis changes for wrinkles, and occasionally platysma, rarely mentalis, rarely DAO, rarely levator aliquinasi, although I've done some patients that have had tumors or strokes where they just snarl too much over here, so I knock that muscle out. It seems to be an important area for them. So, you know, it's, if it's a deformity, I can work on this area. I had a gentleman that had a, had a traumatic brain injury the other day I was looking at, and I had recommended actually knocking out his DLI right here, which is an area I tend not to do, but just for a facial balance, it would have helped him. So hopefully that was a good summary of lower facial Botox.